The story unfolds in the morning within a vast underground bunker. Holston Becker, the local sheriff, arrives for duty at the station. Abruptly, he isolates himself and gazes sadly through the bunker window at the desolate surface. There, amidst the post-apocalyptic scenery, lies Holston's wife, having been there for several years. The sheriff confides in his assistant, expressing his desire to depart the bunker. The assistant is taken aback. Nobody knows what lurks beyond or what catastrophe befell the outside world. Nevertheless, anyone can venture out into the unknown, but returning is not an option. So, despite the evident danger of the world beyond the bunker, why did Sheriff Becker choose to make this decision? The sheriff remembers the face of his wife, named Allison, and all the events leading up to her exit. The Becker couple spent their entire lives in a 144-story underground bunker along with 10,000 people who have no clue whatsoever about who built the bunker and how their ancestors ended up here. Above the bunker, the only camera is installed, and its feed is broadcasted on a large screen in the local cafeteria. This is the only way the bunker residents see the outside world. According to rumors, 140 years ago, there was an uprising in the bunker. People revolted and for some reason wanted to go outside. However, the authorities managed to suppress the rebellion, after which all information about the past was destroyed. The current generation of bunker residents has never seen ordinary earthly landscapes and bodies of water, not even in pictures. Storage of items from the past is also strictly prohibited. For this crime, people are severely punished and may even be expelled outside. Although protective suits are worn by the exiles, they still don't live long. Lifts, microscopes, and many other benefits of civilization are also inexplicably prohibited in the bunker. The legal department strictly enforces the rules. They often conduct searches and do not even obey the sheriff and the mayor. Sheriff Holston Becker and his wife Allison adhere to all bunker regulations, earning permission to have children. Allison's contraceptive capsule is removed by the doctor, giving the couple a year to conceive. Birth rates within the bunker are strictly controlled to prevent overpopulation. Allison, employed in the IT department, faces criticism from her boss after publishing an article on data recovery. She's frustrated by the numerous restrictions within the bunker and the prohibition on inquiring about its history. However, the sheriff believes these measures are vital for shelter safety. Residents commemorate Freedom Day, marking the quelling of an uprising 140 years prior. Mayor Ruth Johns expresses genuine affection for the bunker populace, a sentiment that has seen her re-elected for 40 consecutive years. During her duty shift, Allison encounters programmer George Wilkins, who presents an encrypted hard drive resembling contraband. Intrigued, Allison helps crack the access code, revealing illegal content. Among the files are blueprints for a hidden section of the basement and videos depicting a verdant outside world. Allison and George realize the authorities are deceiving the bunker's inhabitants, and the exterior environment is actually safe. As the year draws to a close, Allison remains unable to conceive. Seeking answers, she consults fertility expert Gloria, who reveals that Allison's contraceptive capsule wasn't removed as claimed by the doctor. The legal department, monitoring residents closely, deems Allison unreliable and would never authorize her to bear children. Desperate, Allison removes her own contraceptive capsule and reveals the truth about the bunker to the residents, insisting that the displayed image in the cafeteria is false. However, her claims are met with skepticism, and she decides to leave the bunker. Subsequently, Allison is promptly arrested and prepared for departure. Sheriff Becker is deeply troubled by his wife's actions and seeks to comprehend her motivations while also identifying those responsible for her decision. Allison remains convinced she can survive outside and pledges to wipe the outdoor camera, a customary gesture for departing residents, only if the exterior world proves safe. Equipped with a protective suit and her sleeves sealed shut, Allison is released outside to the watchful eyes of the cafeteria crowd. She wipes the lens to signal safety but collapses before reaching the hill's summit, remaining motionless. Two years elapse, and the sheriff struggles to reconcile with Allison's absence. He learns of George Wilkins' demise, the programmer with whom Allison communicated, supposedly falling from a railing. George's girlfriend, mechanic Juliet Nichols, asserts that George was not responsible for his own demise but was killed by someone else. On the night of George's death, he was filled with joy and intended to share something significant with Juliet but didn't get the chance. Sheriff Becker is willing to entertain Juliet's account if she cooperates truthfully with him. The woman leads the sheriff to the deepest, least known part of the bunker, where a drilling machine used in the shelter's construction resides. George frequented this area, gathering relics. Upon examination, the sheriff and Juliet discover new items, a video camera, the same hard drive, and recordings of Allison. Initially inclined to destroy the evidence, the sheriff is persuaded by Juliet to preserve it in memory of his wife and initiate an investigation. Becker agrees, pledging to update Juliet once progress is made. Three months pass without any communication from the sheriff. Suddenly, he decides to venture outside the bunker. There, he encounters a lush green landscape, confirming his wife's assertions. However, Allison isn't beneath the tree as depicted from the bunker. 
As the sheriff's health deteriorates, he removes his helmet and crawls towards Allison's location, ultimately succumbing. Discontent brews within the bunker as the beloved sheriff is sent for purification, the bunker's term for leaving. Juliet, along with others, witnesses Becker's departure, feeling betrayed and abandoned after his fall. Determined to uncover the truth, she considers exploring the secret underwater tunnel at the bunker's base, but Juliet is afraid to descend. Mayor Ruth Johns and Deputy Sheriff Sam Marnes must swiftly select a new sheriff to maintain order and prevent revolt among residents. Candidates suggested by the legal department are considered, but Becker's wish to appoint Juliet as sheriff is honored. Juliet, a brilliant mechanic, operates in the deepest section of the bunker, ensuring the generator functions to sustain life for all residents. When the mayor and deputy sheriff express a desire to meet her personally, they descend 144 floors to visit her. Despite their offer of the sheriff position, Juliet initially refuses, yet Becker insists they give her the sheriff's badge, which bears the scratched word truth on its reverse side. Realizing this is the sign she's been awaiting, Juliet agrees to become sheriff under the condition that she repairs the malfunctioning generator first. The generator has been malfunctioning for a while, and if it breaks down, the bunker will be left without power indefinitely. However, to fix the generator, it needs to be shut down. People will be terrified in the darkness at that moment. With the generator offline, fear grips the bunker as darkness looms. Amidst the tension, a brief glimpse of nature's beauty appears on the cafeteria's main screen, though it garners little attention. Demonstrating heroism, Juliet successfully restores power to the bunker by repairing the generator, unveiling the scorched desert image once more. Leaving George's camera in the care of her mentor Martha for repair, Juliet, though reluctant about assuming the role of sheriff, ascends to investigate George's case upstairs. Mayor Ruth suddenly falls ill and succumbs to rat poison, spiking her water. Deputy Sheriff Marnes, devastated, vows to uncover the culprit. Doubtful of Juliet's capabilities, Marnes strikes a pact with her. He'll aid her in solving George's mysterious disappearance if she assists in unearthing Mayor Ruth's poisoner. As their partnership grows, an unidentified intruder breaches Marnes's apartment at night. Paul Billings assumes the role of deputy sheriff, endorsed by the legal department, while Bernard Holland, head of the IT department, assumes interim mayoral duties. Despite his reservations, Holland collaborates with Juliet. The legal department intends to sweep the mayor's and former deputy sheriff's cases under the rug, deeming them accidents. They plan to scapegoat an innocent or cover up the truth. Unwilling to accept either, Juliet launches a thorough investigation. Despite her deputy Paul's adherence to rules, he proves to be an ally and aids Juliet in their investigation. Together, they uncover that the individual responsible for the recent crimes is someone dispatched by the legal department. They trace the crimes to Robert Sims, the department head, orchestrating a cover-up and eliminating those involved. It turns out that Sims is responsible for all the recent horrors. Unable to substantiate her suspicions, Juliet delves into George's case. Seeking insight, she consults Marta, George's mentor, who discovered prohibited camera lenses in his possession. The camera harbors powerful lenses prohibited within the bunker. Possession or transfer of such lenses warrants expulsion. Marta suspects Juliet might face the same fate. In her pursuit of information about the relics, Juliet tracks down George's ex-girlfriend, who, despite her fear, trusts that Juliet won't surrender her to the legal department. She relinquishes the last relic in her possession, a highly forbidden item, a children's book predating the bunker's establishment. Returning home, Juliet flips through the book and marvels at its captivating images of forests, rivers, animals, and a breathtaking seascape, scenes entirely foreign to her. Unbeknownst to her, hidden cameras observe her every move, with sophisticated equipment transmitting live feeds of the bunker's sections to monitors. Sims leads the supervisory group, instructing them to closely surveil Juliet's activities and conversations. In the book, Juliet discovers Gloria's name, the same pregnancy consultant from previous encounters, hinting at her deeper involvement in the bunker's mysteries. However, Gloria currently resides in the medical section, subdued by tranquilizers under Sims' directives to prevent her from divulging information unnecessarily. Mayor Bernard Holland summons Juliet and confides his suspicions about the legal department's power grab within the bunker. Juliet assures Holland of her commitment to his safety and places her trust in him. Intent on speaking with Gloria, Juliet turns to her father, Pete, the chief physician. Despite the risks, Pete agrees to help Juliet by bringing Gloria to a lucid state for a conversation. Gloria regains consciousness and reveals to Juliet crucial information. A covert group of keepers once safeguarded knowledge predating the bunker's construction and the uprising. However, the legal department intervened, administering substances to erase their memories. Juliet's mother, a keeper herself, secretly crafted a microscope for medical purposes, piquing the legal department's interest. Their subsequent raid, during which they destroyed the microscope and shattered Juliet's mother's life, led to her tragic demise. The overseers, led by Sims, detect Juliet's visit to Gloria and dispatch a capture team. 
In a sudden realization, Juliet understands that the legal department monitors and eavesdrops on everyone using the mirrors. She covers the mirror and examines the ventilation in Gloria's room, where Sheriff Becker had previously concealed a hard disk intended solely for Juliet's eyes. Retrieving the evidence just in time, Juliet evades capture before the arrival of the capture team. Sims interrogates Gloria, discovering that Juliet possesses the hard disk, triggering a frantic pursuit. Juliet attempts to access the hard disk but encounters difficulty deciphering its contents. Desperate for assistance, she turns to Lucas, a programmer she knows. Despite Juliet's urgency, Lucas hesitates to engage with the forbidden relic. Juliet's frustration peaks as she destroys the mirror, revealing the surveillance camera to Lucas, who remains reluctant to aid her. He only notices the enigmatic label 18 on the hard disk before departing. Despite a search, Juliet manages to evade capture. Seeking solace and trust, Juliet rendezvous with the mayor in a secluded field. Though initially supportive, the mayor's mention of the hard disk implicates him as the true mastermind behind the surveillance, with Sims merely an accomplice. By the mayor's directive, Juliet is seized by the legal department under the guise of her desire to leave the bunker, a fabrication she cannot disprove. As preparations for her cleansing commence, Juliet seizes an opportune moment to reclaim her backpack containing the hard disk from Sims and escapes undetected, leaving Mayor Bernard wary of her threat to his authority. The legal department conducts a fruitless search of Juliet's apartment, finding nothing. Later, her deputy, Paul, covertly enters her home and discovers the children's book. Despite his trembling hands, Paul reluctantly opts to destroy the book but retains one page for himself. Meanwhile, the mayor interrogates programmer Lucas, who reluctantly divulges information about Juliet's actions, including the mention of the number 18 on the hard disk. This revelation unsettles the mayor, who possesses a mysterious key marked with the same number. The overseers find out which computer Juliet connected the hard disk to. She infiltrates Sim's apartment and decrypts its contents. Among the materials is a video message from George. Although Juliet is unable to view it in its entirety before being urged to leave by Sim's wife, who warns of an imminent capture team, the sheriff manages to slip away. Juliet finds loyal allies who aid her in deceiving the legal department. Upon re-watching the disc's contents, George reveals the existence of a secret tunnel door at the bunker's base, believed to hold answers to its mysteries. He implores Juliet to explore it and also directs her to a video showcasing green grass and birds outside the bunker, which she shares with her allies for broadcast throughout the facility. The overseers once again track Juliet and her allies, prompting them to flee through the garbage chute, evading capture. Utilizing their newfound access to the bunker's video network, Juliet's friends swiftly broadcast the video of the serene landscape outside, captivating many viewers before the mayor intervenes, shutting down the system. Despite this, numerous individuals manage to witness the tranquil scenery. Juliet manages to escape once more, prompting the mayor to suspect her use of the garbage chute. They corner her at the bunker's base, but she's rescued by friends from the lower section. Upon regaining consciousness, Juliet swiftly confides in her mentor, Martha, sharing all she knows. Law enforcement, led by the mayor, quickly locates Juliet. In a dramatic turn, the mayor smashes the hard disk with a hammer and offers Juliet a deal. If she cooperates and voluntarily departs the bunker, he will pardon all her allies and reveal the truth about George's fate. Accepting the offer, Juliet is escorted to a clandestine chamber where bunker surveillance is monitored. There, she watches a video detailing George's final moments. Pursued by law enforcement, George injures himself to shield his loved ones from harm. Moved by the revelation, Juliet weeps as she prepares to depart the bunker. Touching farewells ensue as her loved ones bid her goodbye, including Martha, who emerges from her seclusion of 25 years. A crowd gathers to witness Juliet's departure. Donned in a protective suit and taped with high-quality tape, secretly arranged by her friends, Juliet declares her fearlessness before stepping out of the bunker's confines. Leaving the bunker, Juliet surveys the picturesque landscape, only to realize its illusionary nature, mirroring the video recording. Complete with soaring birds, Juliet becomes the first exile to leave the camera lens unobscured. Shielded by her airtight suit, courtesy of the high-quality tape, she ascends a hill. The illusion dissipates, revealing a desolate desert punctuated by craters, surrounded by similar bunkers. On the horizon lie the remnants of a city. With resolve, Juliet ventures into the unfamiliar terrain. Meanwhile, within the bunker, Mayor Bernard, gripped by fear, unlocks a mysterious door using the key marked with the number 18. Would you dare to leave the bunker if you didn't know what's outside? Share your opinion in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.